Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. and good morning. good morning. I am delighted to be here. And the whole notion of TED, ideas worth spreading. The idea I'd like to spread this morning is we should be serious about humor. Now, that may be oxymoronic wisdom, uh, but I'm really serious and passionate about it. How do I know it? Well, I know it from Irma Bombeck, dear old Irma, who said, when humor goes, there goes civilization. And ain't that the truth? I think if our species is going to survive, humor is going to be a godsend that we as human beings need to give one another. I also learned this from John F. Kennedy, who said there are three things which are real. God, human folly, and laughter. The first two are beyond our comprehension, so we must do what we can with the third. And that's what I've been doing for the last 35 years, taking a look at, working with, and playing with humor. And from a guy named Joel Goodman, quote that says, seven days without laughter makes one week. <laughs> How do we strengthen ourselves with the positive power of humor? Well, I encourage us to embrace the humor that's all around us and within us. I got a great example of that a number of years ago. Our organization's international conference had a woman named Linda Brandenburg come from Valdez, Alaska. And at the conference, Linda gave me this very simple bumper sticker. We're all here because we're not all there. <laughs> Evidently, some of you can identify with that sentiment. What do you do when you're not all here? Humor is a great way of bringing us into the here and now, which is where we experience joy and laughter and faith and will to live. And we need it. Our assistant had up on her door a couple years ago this little sign. Life is a test. It is only a test. If this had been your actual life, you would be given better instructions. <laughs> you know, life has a way of giving us pop quizzes when we least need them or want them or expect them. How do we take the pop quizzes that life tosses in our path? Humor can be the ace up our sleeve. Sometimes it starts early. Came across this prayer. Some of you, again, might identify with it. Dear God, so far today I've done all right. I haven't gossiped. I haven't been losing my temper. I haven't been nasty, greedy, grumpy, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that. But in a few moments, I'm going to get out of bed. <laughs> And from then on, I'm going to need all the help I can get. <laughs> How do we literally and figuratively rise to the occasion to take on the day ahead of us? Humor can help us lift our spirits to take on those challenges up ahead. The last couple years have not been a laughing matter in terms of our economy and the global economy. How do we take that on? I got a great example from Mac McGinnis from Indiana. One of his buddies opened up a new branch office. And to help him celebrate, Mac had a local florist deliver some flowers to the new branch office. Went to visit his buddy and was delighted to see this beautiful arrangement adorning one of the desks. But he became a little bit distressed when he noticed that the card accompanying the flowers had on it the words, rest in peace, which is obviously the wrong message. So Mac makes a beeline back to the florist very quickly, thanks her for the pretty flowers but then proceeds to chew her out for an eternity about the totally inappropriate message. After hearing this guy rant and rave forever, the florist turned to him with a twinkle in her eyes and said very simply, oh, sir, don't worry. Just think, somewhere today in this city, somebody was buried beneath some flowers that read, good luck in your new location. <laughs> So whether you're six feet over or six feet under or somewhere in between, you miss a great way of helping us create our own good luck in whichever location we find ourselves. Let me check on your location. By show of hands, how many of you could have used another hour's sleep last night? Okay, how about two more hours? 
three. <laughs> what do you do when you start at nine sharp and end at five dull? Humor, great wake up call, great way of giving ourselves a shot in the arm. How many of you ever experienced stress in life? And how many are too stressed to raise your hand? <laughs> how many of you would say you have a good sense of humor? Can I see your hands? Half decent would count. Okay, got a couple more takers with that escape clause. How many of you ever have difficulty remembering jokes? Okay, look at your response to these two questions. I'd say about 88.2% uh, of you indicate you have at least a half decent sense of humor. 98.4% indicate can't remember a joke to save my life. One of the myth conceptions, myth conceptions that I like to puncture about humor is that humor doesn't equal only joke telling. And in fact, when I go into a serious corporation or hospital or school system and they hear that I'm doing a program on humor, some people think I have the message that all of you should become stand-up comedians on the job or in your life. That ain't my message. Although transmitting humor through jokes is one way of going, it's not the only way. In fact, there are thousands of ways of inviting smiles <laughs> in our life and work. And they come in different flavors. <laughs> so I encourage you to broaden your perspective of what humor is, what it could be. It certainly includes joke telling. It goes way beyond. In fact, I think it's much more important than mere joke telling. Humor is an attitude. It's a perspective. It's a way of dancing with life so that we can prevent a hardening of the attitudes. Now, how do you do it? Well, I learned a lot from a guy named Steve Allen, who I think is one of the great Renaissance men of the 20th century, the founder of The Tonight Show, in the Guinness Book of Records for having created over 7,000 songs, the author of 50 plus books, we had the great good fortune to have Steve Allen at our international conference where he said these words, nothing is quite as funny as the unintended humor of reality. Let me say it again. Nothing is quite as funny as the unintended humor of reality. In other words, the best comedy writers in the world are not those people getting 200,000 bucks a year to do it. It's good old reality that does it for all of us for free. Humor is the best reality show alive. If you want to develop your sense of humor, if you want to uh, spread serious humor in your life and work, put the Steve Allen principle into practice for five minutes a day, looking for the humor around you. If you do, you'll come across gems like this. Susan Davis took one of my graduate courses on this serious subject, and she came to class one day and said, I've got a good example of the Steve Allen principle. She'd seen a sign in front of a local church announcing two services for that particular Sunday. The 9.30 a.m. service had the theme, Jesus walks on water. The five o'clock service had the theme, searching for Jesus. <laughs> now, without being disrespectful, uh, you know, sometimes life throws the juxtaposition right in your lap. You can't hardly miss it. Those of you who are parents or grandparents or teachers, uh, know that out of the mouths of babes come some gems. The Steve Allen principle is alive and well there. One little girl tells us, when your mom is mad at your dad, do not let her brush your hair. <laughs> you know, some of you have been on one end of the brush or the other there. Uh, when we were going to Antarctica a number of years ago, where I had the chance to speak on my seventh continent, we were crossing the Drake Passage. And I got to thinking about the kid who informed us, Sir Francis Drake circumcised the world <laughs> with a 100-foot clipper. <laughs> I mean, just the image alone is worth the price of admission, right? <laughs> Humor is alive and well, even and especially in serious places, like hospitals. Now, in the days before Google became a verb, uh, we'd get about 50,000 letters a year at the Humor Project from people all over the world saluting the humor flag. One of them came from a nurse in a hospital who told us that somebody had posted an article at their nursing station that said, recent research shows that the first five minutes of life are very risky. Now, statistically, we know that's true. 
evidently one of her co-workers had penciled in the words, the last five minutes aren't so hot either. <laughs> and ain't that the truth? And of course, it's what we do in between the first five and the last five that makes all the difference, and that's where humor can make a powerful, delightful difference. What else is serious in life? Well, relationships. Even our language predisposes us. When two people start going together, we say things like, are John and Mary getting serious about each other? I wonder what would happen if we switched that around and said, are John and Mary getting lighthearted about each other? Now, there's a couple in our town that was celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. This is a cause for celebration and amazement. And they asked the couple, you know, hey, what's your secret? What's your trick? How'd you do it? The guy responded, our secret is that every single week, we go out for two candlelight dinners. I go out on Wednesday nights, and she goes out on Fridays. A smile can be the shortest distance between two people. Homework assignment, home play assignment for you. To put the Steve Allen principle to practice, Look for humor in your daily life in your newspaper. Now, this is where some people say, OK, Joel, I know you're kidding here, because I look at the paper and I see a lot of pretty bad news. But if you read between the lines, you come across gems like this. It was reported today that vandals made off with all the toilet seats at the local police station. Police have nothing to go on. <laughs> So what do you do when you got nothing to go on in a figurative sense, you know? Humor is a great way of helping us keep on going and growing and going with the furrow and rolling with the punches that life throws us. Now, I'd like to give you a little pop quiz here. And for some of you, this might be an eye test. Can you all see the letter R? Okay, we all literally and figuratively have opportunities staring us in the face. Now, underneath that, I'm going to write another set of letters, and I'll move out of the way so you can all see. I'd like to ask you to turn to your neighbor and very quickly just read aloud to each other those two lines. Turn to your neighbor and just read aloud those two lines. OK, sports fans, let's see what we got. How many of you at first glance could read Opportunity is Nowhere on the sheet of paper? Great. How many at first or second glance could also perceive Opportunity is Now Here? And how many of you at first, second, or third glance could also read Opportunity I Snow Here? <laughs> We're all looking at the same chunk of reality, but we don't necessarily all see it the same way. Of course, this is a metaphor for life. Some people look at life or a situation and say, opportunity is nowhere. This is not a laughing matter. <laughs> Others will look at the same chunk of reality and say, opportunity is now here, or we need to create the opportunity now here to see humor. I had a great example of that, a little pop quiz in my life, when opportunity seemed like it was nowhere. My dad had a heart attack. Not fun or funny? I flew down to Maryland where I found dad, this strong, vibrant man, in the intensive care unit at the hospital in Maryland. This strong man with tubes going into him every which way, laying there ashen. I happened to bring with me this cartoon. I don't know if it would be appropriate to use it or not, but the moment seemed to present itself and I took the risk. And I showed mom and dad in the ICU this cartoon. It's a cartoon of a patient standing there in one of those flimsy hospital gowns. And it's the back view. And the patient is saying, now I know why they call it the ICU. <laughs> and I showed it to mom and dad. They loved it. They cracked up. And I realized that, yes, even for that fleeting moment, that blessed respite of humor helped us to seize the opportunity and keep on going. Happily, dad made it through, and I can live to talk about it and laugh about it as well. How do you do it? 
For me, the bottom line of humor is being able to laugh at ourselves, to laugh with others, to use the positive power of humor, and to be able to laugh at ourselves. Because life has a cosmic joke. We may strive for excellence in our lives, but the cosmic joke is, by definition, human beings ain't perfect. So what do we do with the gap between the excellence we seek and the imperfection on occasion that we need to live with? Being able to laugh at ourselves is a gift we can give ourselves. Example, I was on a radio show, actually it was WGY in this neck of the woods a while ago with Bob Cutmore. And we were asking listeners to call in that evening with examples of times that they needed to or could laugh at themselves. One of the callers was a woman named Doris Pack who told us that one day she'd gone down to the basement to start up her washing machine. In her words, while I was down there, I thought to take off my jeans and shirt and throw them in the washer too. I was standing there in my underwear when I heard a masculine voice call out, meet her man. I had nowhere to hide. Then I saw my son's football helmet and a pennant from a local school. So I quickly donned the helmet, held the pennant, and stood motionless in the corner. <laughs> the man came down to read the meter and was then turning to leave. I breathed a sigh of relief until I heard him say, lady, I sure hope your team wins. <laughs> Our team can win if we use the positive power of humor. Just for the health of it, because a smile is the shortest distance between two people, and because humor is a great way to tickle stress before it tackles us. Thank you so much. Thank you.